Neil deGrasse Tyson um, was on CNN. He was on Fareed Zakaria's show. And he's going to go on a well-articulated um, rant about climate change deniers and the current status uh, that we have in America where people are still refraining. You know, like Steven Crowder put up that video with the, with the he did an interview with this uh, scientist who's a, I believe, a meteorologist who's a climate denier. He's massively in the industry. He gets a lot of oil cash. But um, Neil deGrasse Tyson is going to go on to say, what does it take for people to finally admit, you know, that there's climate change and then we have to now decide what to do? He says that rather than debating the science, people should be um, debating what the solutions will be. So rather than saying, oh, you know, debating whether or not the science is correct, let's debate on what the correct solutions are going to be politically. And he goes on to say that uh, it may be too late to recover from climate change. You know, we had Hurricane Harvey, Hurricane Irma. There was the massive 8.1 magnitude earthquake in Mexico with a ton of aftershocks. And you have a bunch of wildfires going on. Now there's going to, you know, there's Hurricane Jose. Now there's going to be Hurricane, um, I believe it's called Maria. So it's the world is being really crazy hit right now. But check out this clip here. Neil deGrasse Tyson is really going to spit some truth here. Check it out. Time. I think this 50 inches of, I can't even picture 50, how many raindrops is that? 50 inches of rain in Houston. This is, this is a shot across our bow. A hurricane, the width of Florida going up the center of Florida. These are, these are shots across our bow. That at what, what will it take for people to recognize that a community of scientists are learning objective truths about the natural world and that you can benefit from knowing about it. Uh, even news reports on this channel uh, uh, talked about the, uh, the fact that we have fewer deaths per hurricane. Why? Because you now know weeks in advance. We have models that have trajectories of hurricanes. In decades gone by, it was like, there's a hurricane there, we don't know. Should I stay, should I go? And then you stay and you die, okay? So uh, to cherry pick science, it, it's an odd, thing for a scientist to observe and I don't I didn't grow up in a country where that was a common phenomenon we went to the moon and people knew science and technology fed those discoveries and the day two politicians are arguing about whether science is true it means nothing gets done nothing it's the beginning of the end of an informed democracy as I've said many times what I'd rather happen is you recognize what is scientifically truth then you have your political debate uh, so in the case of, 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 of energy uh, policy, whatever, it's you, you don't ask, is the science right? You ask, should we have carbon credits or, right, or ta right. uh, tariffs? What's the right response? The right, exactly. What is the economic dimension of this? That's where the politics needs to come in, and it's not. The longer we delay, the more... I worry that we might not be able to recover from this, because all our greatest cities are on the oceans and water's edges historically for commerce and transportation. And as storms kick in, as water levels rise, they are the first to go. And we're, we don't have a system. We don't have a civilization with the capacity to pick up a city and move it inland 20 miles. That's, this is happening faster than our ability to respond. That could have huge economic consequences. Support independent progressive media by leaving a subscription down below. Leave a like and share the video. Help us out on Patreon or you can donate in other ways. Links are in the description down below. We are fighting Trump tooth and nail and we will continue to do so with your help.